Ben is a, a super sweet four-year-old little boy that loves Thomas the train and he loves all things vehicular. He's just a happy, sweet-spirited little kid. You know, it wasn't until that about a year in when he wasn't really crawling, he was definitely not walking, and he was not really babbling that much. We needed to figure out why it was happening and, and then from there figure out what we needed to do to fix it. The pediatrician kept giving me small answers, that maybe that he was male, that they have a tendency to speak later. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times we heard Einstein didn't speak until he was four. You know, I wanted to rip my hair out every time someone said that. Basically ascribing all of his many developmental delays to his gender or um, the fact that he was a fourth child, she kind of just ascribed it to things that to her were explainable, but to me I knew that wasn't what the problem was. His cousin that was six months younger started to pass him up in all of these developmental stages. That's when it became a little more real, that uh, it wasn't something he was going to just outgrow. He was going to need therapy. He was going to need help. He was going to have to you know, fight his way to overcome it. It took about two years um, to get a diagnosis, really. Uh, well, it took two and a half years until we got the genetics back and discovered what it truly was. We started with early intervention through the county with speech and occupational therapy, um, eating therapy, and then they recommended that we go to the children's health care facility. Our original diagnosis with him was slight autism. But I didn't agree with the diagnosis. I didn't feel like that's what it was. We went from autism to apraxia to global apraxia to not global apraxia. I mean, we would get a diagnosis and then six months later he would have developed enough in one aspect that they would take away one of those diagnoses. He said, let's do an MRI. So we did an MRI and then um, a couple other tests and they all came back normal. So he recommended genetics. So we got on a waiting list for genetics, which he said would take about a year. They told us it was a year to a year and a half wait. We just accepted that that was how it was. To reach his final diagnosis was, um, it was epically frustrating. It, it messed with my whole life. My, my marriage suffered, my relationships with my kids, it seemed like I was focusing so much on Benjamin and so much time on researching on the internet that I was kind of pushing them aside. So my brother-in-law worked with Lori at the Heart Association and I found out from him that Lori was moving to work for Linogen and that they did a chromosomal array test, um, which is what we were waiting for. And I spoke with her and learned about their services and what they do. It just sounded like it was almost too good to be true. Um, but then we went to the pediatrician and they did the swab because they'd sent it there and it came back and we got our answer. It was like, I don't know, it was like angels coming down from heaven and, and helping us when we didn't know what to do. We knew about DeGeorge syndrome. We knew what it was, but we didn't really know what accompanied it. It wasn't until we met with a genetic counselor that she said, okay, this is, what, this is what you have. This is what comes with it. These are all the tests you need to get run. I called that day a cardiologist's office because I understood that 80% of these children have some form of heart defect. So I called them and they had me in there the next day at one o'clock knowing what his diagnosis was. Um, and he did have abnormal results and he did have the echocardiogram after that and he did have a uh, def a defect in his heart. And from there, it was two days later, we were getting his, his kidneys checked and, and his calcium levels checked and we were checking him for immune deficiencies and you know, all of these things that come with DeGeorge syndrome, we all of a sudden knew we need to get him checked for all of these things. And catching it as early as we did, you know, we're able to get it fixed. So all within two months, we got our diagnosis and, and on the 19th of November, he'll have his heart fixed. and. This whole process has been almost unreal, how fast it's been, how smooth it's been. It, it's been a godsend for us, really. They handled all of the phone calls for the insurance. They have dealt with them exclusively. I have not had to make any phone calls. I have not had to fill out any paperwork. And it's so nice because I have so much on my plate anyway that to have them do that is, um, I, 
I can't even put it into words how valuable that is. Don't be afraid to know what it is, what's causing it. Um, you'll always be able to treat the symptoms, but knowing what is causing it, you know, is invaluable. It's priceless. Um, it probably saved his life.